Hi, it's Amy. And it's Tim from Go With Less. If you are joining us today because you heard about us on the Bigger Pockets Money Podcast, extra welcome to you. If you don't have any idea what I'm talking about, welcome anyway. We welcome everybody and we're happy that you're here. On that episode, we talked about a topic that is so near and dear to our heart, and that is house sitting. Today's video, we're gonna talk about house sitting. We are, and house sitting means something to us that it might not mean to everybody when they're talking about house sitting. What it means to us is that we're going to someone's home and we're going there for free, we're getting ourselves there at our expense, and then the homeowners don't pay us anything to be there either. That sounds so, awful, doesn't it? <laughs> the win for us is that we get to be in these lovely homes with these lovely pets and we're there at no cost to us. And the benefit to the homeowner is that they get this service. Basically, we're there taking care of their pets. We're watching their home for free. Yeah, and it is an exchange of service. So we're not hired, they're not our boss or anything like that. This isn't a side hustle. This is part of that sharing economy and it's really, really cool. In about a year, we're getting ready to sell our house and our cars so we could house it around the world for like ever. Yep, that's our plan. We're thinking this might last up to a decade, maybe even longer. We don't have a definitive plan in terms of how long this may last. We're going to do it until we don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, and we are completely obsessed and love it. And we've been doing it since 2015 and are only more excited than we were in 2015. So I don't know that we're going to be sick of it anytime soon. In today's video, we tapped a lot of very experienced house sitters. As I mentioned, we've been doing it since 2015, but we've been doing it as part-timers because we still have one kid left in school, so we can't hit the world yet. But soon we will. In the meantime, we've tapped a lot of our friends in the international house sitting community. I'm gonna community. interrupt here, so <laughs> Amy has a superpower. You know how people will say sometimes, if I had a superpower, what would it be? <laughs> Amy has a superpower, and that superpower is connecting. Whether it's in person connecting or whether it's online, Amy just has this amazing ability to connect with people. So Amy is engaged heavily in the house sitting community, the international house sitting community, in a variety of ways. And she's connected us with people that do this full time. They've been doing it full time for a really long time. So these are people that are super, super knowledgeable that she has connected us with and we get the benefit of all the knowledge that we have because she's engaged in these communities that provide us all kinds of great information. So what we're going to do today is we're going to share some pro tips that, that Amy has gleaned <laughs> from this community that she's connected us with. And we're going to share that stuff with you today. Tim is my PR guy. Thanks, honey. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> So as Tim mentioned, we enlisted the pros on this, but we've been doing this for long enough. We have a lot of our own tips. So we're gonna be including lots and lots of our tips, lots and lots of pro tips, and they are amazing. There are so many amazing tips that we're gonna break this video into three parts. We're gonna put them out three weeks in a row just to make it easy to watch, kind of like a television show, I guess. Today's episode will cover best practices before the sit starts or at the very beginning of the sit. Next week's video will take care of during the sit best practices and week three will cover the end of the sit and after the sit. I hope that you will stay tuned for all the videos and that you'll subscribe over here in the corner because we're coming up with a new video every single Wednesday. Our videos aren't always about house sitting. Sometimes they cover travel hacking. Sometimes they cover travel. We are getting ready to be nomads in about a year, which means that we talk about our journey getting out of our current life. So I hope that you'll stay tuned for today's video. And with that, let's get started. We're gonna get started at the very beginning and that is applying to a house sit. When you're applying to a house sit on a house sitting platform, you're going to wanna do a personal letter, not a form letter. That's exactly right. So it's important to connect with the homeowners. Just like we talked about Amy earlier being a great connector, you want to connect with the homeowners. You want to reference the pet's names, reference the homeowner's names, make sure that the homeowners understood that you've read their profile and that you understand what's going on with the sit completely. Yeah, and if it's a sit that you might have to drive a far distance or fly to, check out before you even apply, is this doable? Is this a very, very expensive location that you will not be able to afford to get to? If so, don't apply. Amy's found these amazing sits all over the world. She's found things, for instance, in Tahiti or these remote islands. 
And we went to look at flights just to see what it would cost to get at there. At Christmas time. It's thousands <laughs> of dollars to fly there. We might have the points to get there, but you would want to make sure if you don't have points and miles that will get you there for free, <laughs> you want to understand that you can afford to get to the destination. If you're lucky enough to have a homeowner reach back out to you, they've, they've gone through your, your response and may come back to you and say, hey, I want to talk to you about coming and sitting in our house. What you would want to propose, and this is probably something you would want to propose in the letter that you send to the homeowners also up front, is that you have a Skype call, you have a FaceTime call, you have some sort of face-to-face -face communication online with the homeowner so that they can get to know you a little better and you can get to know them a little better. This is a great practice not only for them to get to know you, but also for you to get to know the homeowner, what the pets are like, what the home is like. It's just a great way to, for both of you to vet each other. And when Tim mentions a Skype call, this assumes it's not a local sit. We did a whole bunch of local sits to get a lot of good references. We went over and met them in person. That would be, of course, preferred. Yep. But if they're not local, a Skype call is perfect. It, this may also be a time to say no to a sit for exactly. you. Exactly. So if there's something that just doesn't sit right with you in exactly. terms of something you see in the house, something you see about the pets, maybe they're really aggressive. If you don't have you a connection this? with the owners. That's exactly right. This would be a time for you to also say, I don't think this is right for me for whatever reason. Once you commit after that Skype call, that is a huge best practice. Don't cancel the sit. We sit as a couple because we're a couple, but one of the huge benefits of sitting as a couple is if one of us has an issue, the other one is available to take care of things. Tim had back surgery a couple years ago. We were on a house sit with a 150 pound Irish wolfhound. Tim couldn't touch the dog, basically. He could touch it to pet it, but he couldn't walk and he couldn't bend over and pick up dog poop. I had to do all that. But if it was just Tim booked on that sit, he, would have been in, he wouldn't have been able to do it. So having a couple is a really nice thing, but consider only for like the most dire of emergencies would you cancel this. If you're traveling to a house sit, you wanna make sure that you are getting there at least a day early. We drove from Colorado to Santa Barbara and about two hours away from home, our alternator burst or something, whatever the word it is. Burst. I don't know what happens with alternate. I don't know what an alternator is, but the alternator was broken on top of a big hill in Colorado and we needed that fixed for that hours. That hill's a mountain, by the way. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, so we were delayed for hours. We got in on time only because we hustled and kind of skipped our meals and things like that along the way. Um, but if you have weather delays or mechanical problems on an airplane or whatever, and also the homeowner's really busy sometimes when they're trying to hustle out the door. So the last thing they want to be thinking of is giving their entire pet routine as they're trying to pack and go. The past two house sits that we've done, the homeowners didn't have room for us in their house, even though they were lovely people. So we stayed at a nearby hotel at our own expense and we went over a day early, met the pets, got the full routine. It's not unusual that you would stay in the home with the homeowner if they had room. It's a really nice way to get to have a nice relationship with them as well. This is a best practice. It's not necessarily necessary to show up a day before. We really like to do that for our own peace of mind. Also, we think it's better for the homeowner. We want to meet them face to face. We want to meet their pets with them there. Yeah. We like the idea of having this exchange before they go away. We can ask questions when we're in their home with them while they're there. We've heard of situations where somebody shows up and the homeowner is just gone and you're going to go into the house and they've left documentation so that you can take care of things. I don't know that situation would be ideal for us. We it really, wouldn't be ideal. We might do it. We might do it. But ideally, we're having this transition where we're there with the homeowners like a warm real time transition. getting things turned over for us. Yeah, the dogs like it. Dogs, it's a little weird to walk into a house. You don't know if a dog is going to bite you, first of all. And for us, our expectation is that that night where we come in before, if there isn't room in the home, we're going to pay for that at our own expense. Again, this is a best practice. Some homeowners may offer to pay for you to be at an off-site location or stay in their home with them the night before they go away. Yeah, whatever you're comfortable with, but definitely consider getting there earlier. And if you're going to be sitting a very complex house, maybe an off-grid house with a pool and farm animals well, yeah, and things. multiple pets. they got chickens and they have lambs and they have horses and this sort of thing. There may be some education that they need to provide above and beyond just something they're going to put on a piece of paper. That's right. When we were in France, we had to have a tutorial about both of their cars. One of them spoke extensively in French. The car spoke extensively in French. We didn't drive that one. We didn't drive that one. It was brand new. It was really swanky, uh, but that was a little overwhelming, that car. So, uh, so we still drove it just to get an idea of how this works, and we needed the full day, and we, that wasn't nearly enough time. No, it wasn't. We should have had two. Yeah. Let's get into the recommendations of our pro friends. 
from Nikki at Above Us Only Skies. She agrees, always a Skype FaceTime. That's a no-brainer. She also has a really good one. Absolutely listen to your gut instincts. This is so big. Our house sitting profile is really long. There's a video in it. There's all the pictures are filled up, tons and tons about us, more than they could probably ever want to know. But we apply to a lot of house sits that don't have a lot of information. So I actually look at the Skype call as almost the only place I'm getting information about this house sit. So really listen to your gut instinct because you might not find a fit on that Skype yeah, call. So, so what Amy's saying, just saying in, in another way, we're going to circle back to what we said earlier. This isn't just an opportunity for the homeowners to vet you. The Skype call is also an opportunity for you to vet the home situation. And if your gut says, there's something not right with this, this is the time to say, I don't think this sit is right for you. You might want to think about creative ways to say that in a polite way. This might be a great but sit don't for other do people. It. But yeah, but don't, don't, don't do, do, do a sit if your gut's saying something. off This is off not here. right. Right. And Nikki continues with get emergency numbers and check and double check their start and leaving dates. Excellent. Thank you very much, Nikki. From Louise Lou Reed, who runs House Sitting World. House Sitting World, by the way, is a huge Facebook group of house sitters, house owners, people interested in this. And there's an enormous sharing of information. That is a great resource if you're interested in house sitting as a homeowner or as a house sitter. Absolutely make sure you are subscribed on Facebook to House Sitting World. What she says is a good one. Always ask ahead of time if you can have visitors. Give the homeowner the opportunity to say no. Respect their wishes. No more needs to be said. She said it very thoroughly. Yep. And then Ellie Parker followed up with also, this is a good one, check who's allowed in the home. Sometimes the neighbors are not always welcome or Auntie Mabel. Just because the child of a homeowner shows up, that doesn't mean that they're okay in the home. You should check with the homeowner in advance who is allowed in your home so that you aren't caught off guard when someone may show up to the door. Something else that Amy does when we have our Skype calls, she often clarifies is there anybody going to be coming to the house, a house cleaner, or an electrician, or somebody coming to do some work while you're away? So it's just important to know who all's expected to be at the house while they're not there. From our friend Linda, who we just saw last month in San Francisco for the best dim sum ever, ever. with her husband Tony from Happy House Sitters International. She has a really good one. I'm just going to read it verbatim because she said it perfectly. Consider developing a Q&A to send to homeowners that includes questions important to you about the pets, the home, the garden, dates, times, etc. We find it helps set expectations in both directions. It's also been an invaluable resource when we forget important details. The video chat is often so long before the sit, no matter how many notes we take, that document is a lifesaver. Plus, they are a nice reminder of past sits. We do this too. We have a very little font, one and a half page document, and we make sure that this is answered when we're at the house. And also, we're constantly updating it. So every constantly. time we hear something new or we hear about some weird situation, we'll add a question that's related to that experience that we've learned about online to our Q&A form. And we have a friend, Naomi Peters, who is creating the book of the house. And that's going to be an app that goes through every bit of detail you could possibly imagine about a house and a pet situation, everything. And that is in development. So I had her offer a suggestion in the meantime, and hers was another great one. They were such good ones. And I'm just going to read hers because it was so good. Be honest with yourself about what you say yes to. She's a solo woman traveling around the world house sitting. Be honest with yourself about what you say yes to. I've certainly had a couple of experiences early on where I got excited about certain animals or places and said yes to a sit that ended up being far more work than expected. Learning where your boundaries are and sticking to them is very important. The fair exchange that we all strive for is going to be different to each person. What a fair exchange is for me while I'm working more than full time is different than what it would be to a retired couple possibly. That's a good one. So yeah, under, we didn't even mention that. No, we didn't. So Understand how much work is involved with this house sit up front on that's that exactly Skype right. call. It's funny thing is Thanks, I, Naomi. I don't even know that homeowners <laughs> sometimes know what they're asking you to sign up for. So if they have a pool and they have farm animals and they have there's this, a lawn that needs to be mowed there, and there a could be garden. four hours a day worth of effort that they put into their home. They think that's no big deal. They just do it every day and it's what they do. There's two of them. And so if you're signing up for something like that, you need to know it. The and Skype call is the place for That's this. right. The homeowners haven't disclosed that, not because they're being deceptive. They just don't realize the amount of effort they're putting into taking care of their home on a given day. Yeah. And so Naomi's point is a good one. Stick with your boundaries and be careful about overcommitting. And last, but certainly not least, 
comes from our dear friend, Jody. Nat and Jody were our original mentors back in 2015. They run the House Sitting Academy, which is an incredible course that teaches people how to become the absolute best house sitters. They have been doing this full time for six years. They're amazing people. We adore Nat and Jody. Completely. <laughs> Jody highlights Nikki's comment about trusting your gut instinct. She says, we believe it is really important to trust your intuition at every step of the sit. Their house sitting academy aims to help you understand when that gut instinct is kind of like, mm, this isn't looking so good. So really identifying where that is and isn't normal and when you should be walking away and how to walk away with grace. If they you want to be the best sitter that you could possibly be, their course is an amazing resource yeah. to turn you into just that. And they helped us so much. We are like in debt to them forever. When she gave her pro tips, Jody mentioned something in her comments that really, really hit home. When we met Nat and Jody back in 2015, this is a lesson that they taught us then, and it really has stuck with us, and it has changed our outlook of house sitting like tremendously, and that is being of service. We're going to talk about that for a minute. Yeah, having a service mindset. So. This is sort of like volunteering. So the, the good feeling you get when you go and do something good for somebody else, that's I think the mindset that we now approach house sitting with. When we're gonna go into somebody's home, we're there to serve the homeowners, serve the pets, to make sure that when the homeowners are away, they're gonna have great peace of mind, that their home is taken care of, that their like pets are taken care of. above and beyond. The same thing with the pets. The pets, we want them to be oh. comfortable with us and we want them to have an experience like uh, their their parents aren't gone. We yeah, want they don't like miss their parents, their parents yep. as much. They're not so devastated if we can give them so much TLC. So having that service kind of mindset has just reaped, we weren't looking for it to reap huge rewards for us, but it has. Going out in the world with that love has like come back tenfold, yep. which was unexpected and quite delighted. Completely agree. And there you go. That was our before the house sit best practices. Turns out we are putting a whole bunch of house sitters into the world based on just our trips and our experiences. People have no idea what house sitting is. They've never heard of it. Maybe that might be you. If it is, we want to make sure that we're putting the best house sitters into the world. We don't want to put house sitters in the world that think this is a free vacation. If you're approaching this like it's a free vacation, hopefully the conversation that we've started in this video lets you know this ain't no normal vacation. Right? That's completely right. <laughs> it is not. Also, something you might want to note is that this obviously isn't a definitive list of all the best practices. If you want that, you may want to go to Jody and Nat's course. However, this, we want this to be like a place where we can have some dialogue. So if you have some thoughts about your own best practices, please put those below if you happen to be a house sitter. If you've never house sat before, but you have some ideas about, oh, here's some questions I might have if I were going to go on a house sit, please put those down below. If you want to know more about house sitting, please wait until the end of the video where we have our playlist with every video we've ever done about house sitting. There's tons of different topics on that list, so hopefully you'll go browse around and see what fits you. In the meantime, if you got any value out of today's video, we really hope that you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Please subscribe. Our new video is coming out on Wednesday with part two. Don't you want to hear part two? What's part two? <laughs> Part two is best house sitting practices during a sit. It will be shorter because there's a lot of best house sitting practices before a sit. And lastly, if you would please share this video with your social media, with anybody who is interested in house sitting, maybe your partner, maybe you want to house sit and you want to share with your partner, please share this with them. We would be very grateful. Thank you and we'll see you next Wednesday.